Do you wish you were more influential? If so, you might want to watch this video to hear what we have to say about a book called Instant Influence. We both read it, we loved it, and we want to share with you what we learned. Obviously, you don't have to watch this video. That's entirely up to you. But how might it benefit you if you do? Before we continue, we'll give you a chance to consider that question. If you were to learn how to be more influential, how might that help you? Instant Influence is a book by Michael Pantalon, a PhD and award-winning faculty member from the Yale School of Medicine. We fully endorse the book because it's brilliantly written and makes the topic of influence seem so simple. But let's face the truth, you're not going to watch this video just because we say you should. Seriously. Instead, you're much more likely to do so because of the question that we asked you to consider a moment ago. How, How might, might this help you? you? And with that said, let's outline the three guiding principles of this system. We're going to share this with you verbatim from his book. Number one, no one absolutely has to do anything. The choice is always yours. Number two, everyone already has enough motivation. And number three, focusing on any tiny bit of motivation works much better than asking about resistance. So the first two steps can be neatly summed up with one word. Autonomy. If you only remember one single word from this video, autonomy is that one word. In a nutshell, it means that people want the freedom to choose their own actions. We hate feeling that we're being controlled. We prefer to do what we want to do. Sure, people may threaten our freedom, and they can tell us what we have to do or tell us what we're not allowed to do, but we almost always react negatively to this and still wind up doing what we want to do. When we are given autonomy, it reinforces our freedom. So if you choose to remember anything from this video, that's a great choice. Paradoxically, if you give people a sense of autonomy, your power to influence them actually grows tremendously. But what about motivation? Psychologist Michael Pantalon explains that everyone already has enough motivation. What does this mean? Well, in essence, it's all about baby steps. Many of us have a hard time imagining the journey's end, but almost none of us have trouble imagining the first few steps. And when we break a problem down into baby steps, we're usually motivated enough to begin working on it. But we don't usually start something unless we know our own reasons for doing so. Hence, our repeated focus on this hugely important subject of autonomy. autonomy. When we have our own reasons for doing things, it beats the pants off of the tell and sell approach, where someone else tries to convince us of their reasons of what we should be doing. The instant influence process always begins with statements that reinforce the other person's autonomy. A few examples include... The choice is yours, not mine. This is completely up to you. Of course, you're completely free to decide. The decision is yours to make as you choose. Now, let's dive straight into the six-step process of instant influence. Let's go through the steps, and then we can unpack each step so it's easy for you to understand how to apply right after you finish watching this video. Step one is to ask, why might you change? Step two is to ask, how ready are you to change on a scale of one to 10? Step three is to ask, why didn't you pick a lower number? And then step four is to ask, imagine you've changed, what would the positive outcomes be? Step five is to ask, why are these outcomes important to you? And finally, step six is to ask, what is the next step, if anything? Each of these steps is brilliantly crafted to uncover and amplify the other person's reasons for making a change. This is why this process works so well. Now is probably a good time to explain something super important. There must be a real benefit in it for the other person. You're not going to be able to use this process to convince a stranger to hand over the ownership to his Tesla or pay for your child's university tuition. At least not unless there's some compelling reason that benefits them. But if someone is struggling to lose weight, get a better job, complete a project, show up to work on time, or or get out of an abusive relationship, this method is pure gold. So now let's unpack each of these six steps. Step one is to ask, why might you change? 
When you ask why, it's like pointing a camera lens at the topic of your question. And if you were to ask someone, why haven't you been coming to work on time, you're aiming the lens at the problem, which tends to reinforce the problem. And that's not what you want. But if you point the lens at a goal instead of a problem, asking why works just fine. It amplifies someone's own reasons for wanting something, which drives their momentum. So instead of why are you always late for work, you're now going to ask why might it be a good idea to show up on time? Notice that the wording of this question is not instructive. You're in no way telling the other person what to do. You're just asking why it might be a good idea. And you've done this after reinforcing the person's autonomy. You're ready to move on from this step when the other person gives you a genuine answer to this question. Sometimes people don't quite listen to the question. You might ask someone, why might you want to quit smoking? And their reply might be, well, I've tried to quit and it's, it's really hard. You just don't understand. Instant influence teaches a simple technique that looks a whole lot like the agree and repeat strategy that we teach. You simply agree with the person and repeat your question. You might say, I know it's been hard for you to quit, but what are some of the reasons why you might want to quit? All you're doing here is acknowledging the other person's feelings and recentering the discussion on the question. You might need to do this two or three times, provided you're giving off a vibe that you truly want to help, the other person will answer your question. When they do, you've started to unlock their own motivation. That's the key. Okay, so step two is to ask, how ready are you to change on a scale of one to ten? Now we're able to covertly amplify their desire to change with a really cool hypnotic process. As long as you get a real answer in step one, you've helped the other person identify a genuine reason to change. In step two, you're simply asking for a number to quantify that readiness. You're not asking how much they want to change or how willing they are to change. You're asking specifically how ready they are to make the change that they've already told you would help them. Being ready to change is about being ready to take action. That's a lot different than just being interested. And practically everybody will tell you that they want more money or they want to lose weight. Not everybody will tell you that they're actually ready to do those things. Do you see the difference? So you're only ready to move on from step two once the person gives you a number out of 10. It doesn't matter if the number is a two, five, seven, or 10. All that matters is the fact that they give you a number in the first place, representing they're ready to change. Now comes step three. Step three is to ask, why didn't you pick a lower number? Now this question is wonderfully hypnotic. Michael Pantalon may not be a hypnotist, <laughs> but there's no doubt that this question causes a massive pattern interrupt. Nobody is expecting this question, if anything. They'd be expecting you to ask the opposite question. Why didn't you pick a higher number? And this question creates a state of surprise. Provided you're congruent when you ask the question, you'll get the other person to justify their own reasons for change. We know from Dr. Robert Cialdini's work on influence and persuasion that if someone just justifies their reasons for something, they're taking ownership for those reasons and they are building commitment. And if you can get someone to be committed to something, they will act in a way that's consistent with achieving their stated goals. Now it's time to move to step four. Step four is to ask, imagine that you've changed. What would the positive outcomes be? This is another hypnotic question. Whenever you get someone to imagine themselves in a different situation, they get to escape their limits that are imposed upon them by their current situation. When you ask someone to imagine something, you're not actually asking them to do anything. It's just pretend, it's safe, there's no way to fail, it's harmless, so there's no resistance. And it works. It aligns the other person with the awesome feelings of having achieved something important. This amplifies desire and builds momentum. And now we move on to step five, which is to ask, why are these outcomes important to you? Remember that in step four, we found out what positive outcome the other person gets from making a certain change. And now we're taking that positive outcome and we're hitching it to a big important value to really crank up the desire and the momentum. Let's use a quick example. Let's pretend Chris wants to lose weight 
and I'm helping influence that change. Chris has said that he wants to lose weight so he isn't so tired whenever he tries to do something physical. And Mike needs to figure out why this is so important. So he asks, why is it so important for you to be able to move around without getting tired? Well, because I would probably go outside and play with my kids more then, instead of telling them that I'm too tired. And why is it important for you to be able to play with your kids more? Well, when I was a kid, my dad played with me a lot, and I really have good memories of my childhood from that, and I want my kids to have that same experience. You had an awesome dad, and you want that for your kids, so why is that important for you? Well, because a uh, super close family is important to me. I want my kids to grow up wanting to be around us as we get older. And so if you lose weight, you won't feel so tired when you move around. You'll be able to play with your kids more and you'll foster that super close relationship with them. Is that right? Yeah, you know, I never really thought of it that way before. That's pretty weird. That example shows how asking why several times, maybe five, can push the other person from the basic desire to the really deep desire they don't know about. And that deep desire is like a diesel locomotive. And once you uncover it by using why questions, you've hitched the outcome to that deep desire. This is another wonderfully hypnotic amplifier of desire. And now we're ready for the final step in the instant influence process. Step six is to ask, what is the next step, if anything? Now there's a lot that's clever about this question. Notice that it reinforces autonomy. You're not telling the other person what they should do. And by adding, if anything, to the end of the question, you're not even implying that something needs to be done. You're leaving that choice entirely in the hands of the person you are influencing. But this question also does something else that's critically important. It puts the other person at cause rather than at effect. If you are at effect, it means that the world is happening to you and you're not really in control, but that's not what we want. We want to be at cause, in charge of our own destiny. So when you end an instant influence conversation by asking, what's the next step, if anything, you're providing a clear hypnotic suggestion to the other person that they are fully responsible for any action taken. About a year ago, we wrote a blog post called The Hypnotherapy Sandwich. And it talked about two key questions we ask all of our clients. The first question is, what do you want? Without that question, you can't really help anybody achieve their goals. But the final question is the same as step six of instant influence, and that is, what's next? So we love that Pantalon included this as the final step of his process. So that's the entire process. Here's a quick recap. Step one is to ask, why might you change? Step two is to ask, how ready are you to change on a scale of 1 to 10? And step three is to ask, why didn't you pick a lower number? Step four is to ask, imagine you've already changed. What would the positive outcomes be? Step five is to ask, why are those outcomes important to you? And step six is to ask, what is the next step, if any? And before you start, it's critical to reinforce the other person's autonomy. Before we close this out, let's go over a few tips so you can put this into practice. Tip number one, ask permission to do this. You can do this as easily as saying, is it okay if I ask you a few questions about this? Of course, we can stop anytime and you don't have to answer if you don't want to. Tip number two, baby steps. The person who wishes he could quit smoking may not think it's possible to quit cold turkey, but could easily be persuaded to begin by smoking fewer cigarettes per day, or persuaded into researching a stop smoking seminar that's coming up at the local community center. Once the freight train starts moving, the momentum builds and builds. Start with baby steps. Tip number three, it might take more than one conversation. If you are respectful and reinforce the other person's autonomy, you'll most likely get through at least a few of the six steps. You might not finish the instant influence process in the first conversation. So let the first conversation be an opening wedge to future change in another conversation. Tip number four, remember that this only works when there is a genuine benefit for the other person. In that sense, it's just like hypnosis. It works when it's aimed at something the other person really wants. So what's next for you, if anything? We have some suggestions, but whatever you do next is completely your choice. 
If you're watching this on YouTube, you might consider hitting the subscribe button. And if you're on our website, you should see a box where you can get another awesome tutorial on how to get what you want using the agree and repeat strategy. We've been told it's one of our best tutorials. We hope you've enjoyed this information. Keep following Mike Mandel Hypnosis for more content just like this.